What's up, Rollies? It's the Benz fam, and, and we, we are back, back with another video. Hit that subscribe button, join the family. Make sure you like this video, give us the thumbs up. Let's get this video to a thousand likes. A thousand likes. Turn, Turn them notifications, notifications on. Ding, ding, ding. Hit Notification, that bell. gang, gang, gang. So today, we are going to discuss Baby's fibroids. I ain't got no fibroids. You ain't got no fibroids no more. I ain't got no fibroids. I ain't got no fibroids. <laughs> I ain't got no fibroids. Not anymore. Because baby had what is called a myomectomy. So, real quick, a fibroid. Myomectomy. <laughs> a fibroid is a non cancerous growth inside of a woman's uterus that develops during her childbearing years. And it ain't a game. It's but those of y'all that have had fibroids, hashtag fibroids, give us a little bit of your story. Like, did they drive you nuts? Were they really not a big problem? Let us know what's good. Yes, we're curious to know. So a myomectomy is a surgery where they go in there. Um, baby had what's called a laparoscopic myomectomy, where they go in there with cameras and lasers, cut the fibroid off of the uterine wall, suck it out or however Check they out get that it video out too. and um, stitch your uterus back together. It's pretty invasive. Um, so if you're nervous about having it, feel free to hit us up in our DM on Instagram or you can um, send us an email if you have questions. If you're having that surgery soon and you just have some questions for Ash, let us know. Yes. So my fibroid experience was terrible 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 apparently i had had them for years and years and years and they just kept growing and growing and growing and i went to one doctor and you know how they like push on your stomach well she did that and then she is my doctor i'd had for years and she was like looked crazy and was like you need to get to the hospital because something's not right it shouldn't be hard like that well remember we've gone to mexico and you thought you had a bug and that's why you went to her about that you went to her Baby, we went to Mexico, ate something that we shouldn't have ate, or baby was eating ice, is what happened. And, and we was shitty boo boo. Yes, and so then baby was like, if this don't go away in a few days, I'm gonna go to the doctor. She went to the doctor, doctor felt her stomach sent her to get a scan or something. So right? that's why you gotta keep you a real one around. <laughs> so she can remember your story. <laughs> Cause I don't. So yeah, that's why I went to the doctor. Went there, it was totally unrelated. She pushed on my stomach felt that it was really hard in one area, sent me to the hospital, they ran tests or whatever. No, she sent me to a specialist, yes. and the specialist did ultrasound, mm -hmm. one inside and one outside, and that is not the business. They do that and they find this fibroid and they say that it's the size of a grapefruit. So I tried all kind of medications. I mean, this fibroid used to make my period so heavy that it was just crazy, like insane insane period insane. really bad cramping just I, I used to feel like I was gonna die well and I remember when I met you and you would be like I'm on my deathbed I can't move the second day of my period and I always thought she was so dramatic and she was being such a little wimp and like oh god it can't seriously be I wouldn't bad. even make plans no and she would call off of work whatever was supposed to be going on that day was not going to be going, going on. on and nothing could really change i physically like could not make it places like i was dying i felt like i was dying mm -hmm. on that day of, second day of my period i was trying medications they give you there's like a medication they can give you to try and shrink them didn't work nope. they gave you the clotting medication yeah basically the goal was to make me comfortable with the fibroids to in, in order to keep them just like take the pain away, make it so that my periods weren't so extreme and painful. And so they gave me a medicine for clotting so that I wouldn't bleed as much. And then they gave me, what, ibuprofen and mm -hmm. like I didn't want to be taking pain pills and stuff. So I tried that for months and months and months. Then we started our IVF cycle. Initially, I was going to carry. That was our plan. And the more research we did, we just decided that it wasn't worth it. And it just wasn't a good idea to spend that much money and then have baby in a high risk pregnancy. Yeah, like, so fibroids at that size cause a very high risk pregnancy. Because you had more than one. Oh yeah, I had three, huh? You had three, but they only knew about two. But one was the size of a grapefruit and one was also a big, golf ball. A golf ball. A golf ball and a grapefruit. So they knew about so they said, okay, you have two fibroids, one's the size of a grapefruit, one's the size of a golf ball. The issue is is that if you get pregnant 
the embryo could attach to your fibroid mm -hmm. and you'll miscarry or the embryo could attach to your uterus and the fibroid can smash your embryo. We talked about it and we just decided it wasn't a good idea. Yeah. So another issue that my fibroids caused when we had decided to change to IVF was that it pushed my ovary up past my belly really button. button. Yeah, and the doctors at one point weren't even really sure how they were gonna access that. He basically was saying that he couldn't access it. There was no way he was gonna get to that one. Let's see how many follicles are on the other ovary. My fibroids were another added stress to our IVF cycle because I think that had a lot to do with why my levels were so high sometimes. The medication wasn't doing what it should. At one point, they felt like the medication that's supposed to grow your ovaries was growing my fibroids. So they weren't able to access that ovary because it was literally like up past my belly button on one side so they were going to only get eggs off of one ovary it was real stressful we talked about it and we decided let's just wait so baby talked me into getting the surgery and when i went into surgery i'll let you tell them because i was knocked out so when baby went into surgery um me and her mom went and we were only supposed to be there they said the surgery was supposed to be like an hour and a half to two hours um like four hours goes by we haven't heard anything from the doctor so we started like getting a little bit nervous and then finally after like five it really hours took that long yes finally after five hours the doctor comes out to talk to us and lets us know that they found a third fibroid and that they were not able to remove the third fibroid because it was on the other side of her uterus and in order to remove that fibroid they would have had to just botch her uterus and they didn't want to do that we had told them good that translation that. Botch. They had to cut this side to get this one out. Oh. So had they had to cut this side to get this one out, like both sides would be holding on for dear life when they <laughs> stitched them back together, and my uterus would just be like trash. Yeah, basically. Good, good translation. Yeah, so. <laughs> so finally, when they wheel baby into the like the post surgery room and we get to go see her, she was completely out of it. She's in a lot of pain. She couldn't get comfortable. I stayed the night with her at the hospital. I think you only had to stay one night or was it two? Two, two nights. So we, I stayed at the hospital with her the whole time and she was just not comfortable. She was in a lot of pain. She was in a lot of pain when she came home. Yeah, you're right. It was very painful. And what was the recovery? The recovery only had baby like really down for what, like three to four weeks, but still down for six. Six, yeah. So after like four weeks, you can kind of wobble around and stuff mm -hmm. and the scar was real sensitive for a while but you had the other issue though of uh, anemia so because baby had such Damn, heavy was cycles she up. Was, because she had such heavy cycles her whole life her iron was of course messed up uh, she had very very low iron and her scar was not healing finally she went back to the doctor that had found the fibroids and that doctor was like your iron is so low i'm surprised that you're not like fainting but you were starting to get really like short of breath and stuff remember you played basketball with the boys and you was thought getting i was on gonna Disney. die yeah. <laughs> they was clowning me and i'm like nah something ain't right like, something's really I'm like, wrong something's like i'm wrong. not just yeah i'm not just overreacting in my opinion it's worth it it really did i don't know which ovary cc came from but i mean I don't know, I feel like it was necessary. If fibroids are an obstacle in your IVF, I'd say it's worth taking the time off. We had to take a year off. Was it a year? Um, yeah, we missed a few cycles in order to do the, in order to to do to the do surgery. Because then you got to be healed because then they got to do the egg retrieval. And Ooh, and in order to get baby's egg out of that ovary, remember they had to poke hole in your uterus? Ooh, that was, that was like one of the baby. worst pains ever. I was crying after you that. And shivering, that was bad. But yeah, I would say that it's worth it. It's worth it. Like the recovery, if you got somebody that can help you out for a couple of weeks, I mean, you ain't gotta go to work. <laughs> yeah, I think it was worth it. And it's worth it too not to have her her cycle hanging over our heads. Like every time we would be going on a trip, it would be like hanging over our heads. Like, is she gonna start? Is I it started to share it with her. Stuff? Started ruining stuff, huh? <laughs> It did. It started to ruin stuff. It ruined holidays. 
Sexy time. Oh, that's kind of how I was talking For real, because if I was starting and baby had some fun, she knew I was going to be dead and I wasn't dead, attending. And it wasn't, it just wasn't going to be fun even if she attended. So I thugged out a lot of things. Mm hmm. You thugged out that diner. When I was on my period? Mm hmm. Oh, God, I can't believe I didn't cancel. Can you? Mm hmm. You would have if everything wasn't non-refundable. <laughs> everything was non-refundable. I learned to book non-refundable trips on baby just in case it came. So if you are getting your myomectomy surgery, make sure they check out your iron so that you can heal properly, get that fixed. Baby don't have none of those problems no more. Thank God. Mm -hmm. I think she didn't heal properly because of her iron. Iron is very important in like in the healing process and she didn't have enough iron so baby talked me into getting iron infusions that changed my life to get you a real one get you a real one like me yes anyway we love you guys thank you guys comment down below if you have any questions for baby about a myomectomy surgery about any fibroids and anything like know that. this Fibroids are common in black women. Yes, when I first the most found common. out, it was it's kind of weird. I don't talk about stuff like this, but it's a common thing and it's nothing to be embarrassed about or nothing like that. Take care of your fibroids though because, and I pray that it doesn't happen to anybody, but they can become cancerous growths. So you do want to monitor them. If you choose to leave them in, monitor them. And we're going to show you a picture right now. So we love y'all and I holla.